Hey there everyone, this is Ashley Grant here. Today we're going to be looking at how to sync a GitHub fork with its upstream repo and then also how to pull those changes into a feature branch that is on your fork. Uh, this is typically needed when changes have occurred in the upstream repo. Uh, you've already got a pull request or maybe you haven't but anyway you've been working on something in a, in a branch and you need to pull the, the changes from upstream down into your feature branch. Uh, it's something that when you're starting out with Git doesn't seem like the most easy thing to do, but genuinely it is. Uh, once you've done it once or twice, it's, it, it's not too difficult. And if you work through this, re this tutorial with me, you'll understand just how easy it is. So let's get started. What I've done for our tutorial is I've created two virtual machines and two GitHub accounts. We have the upstream virtual machine, which has git tutorial upstream as its uh, GitHub account. And then we have the fork virtual machine, which has git tutorial fork. What's going to happen during the tutorial is that the upstream account is going to create a new GitHub repo. It's going to push some changes to that repo then our fork account is going to fork that upstream repo. It's going to make its own changes on a feature branch. Uh, it's going to create a pull request. After it's created the pull request, our upstream account is going to push some changes up to the upstream's master branch, which is going to cause the pull request created by the fork account to no longer be able to be merged uh, no longer be able to be merged automatically and thus we can imagine that the upstream repo maintainer may ask the author of the fork to rebase off of master and so we're going to show you how to do that all right so to start out what's going to happen is the git git tutorial upstream account is going to come over here and create a new repository for our purposes we're going to call this repository great project we're going to make it public and we're going to click on this checkbox here for initialize this repository with a readme. Uh, this will just make the initial download of the or cloning of the repo a little bit simpler. By clicking this we get our, we are here on our upstream repo uh, home page and we need to go ahead and cl clone this so we we'll simply copy the HTTPS clone URL come down here I've already got git bash open we're going to type git clone we're going to paste in that URL press enter let it do its thing and go ahead and hop into that directory so as part of this tutorial we're going to be doing some simple changes to a file called file1.txt I'm going to do most of these changes using the command line just to make life simpler for us in the tutorial but obviously in real life you would use your favorite text editor. All right, so we'll go ahead and echo edit one from upstream master and put that in to file1.txt. Now we're going to add this, tell git to track this. So git add file1.txt. And we'll go ahead and commit this with an inline message from the command line of commit one from upstream master. And finally, we will go ahead and push this up to the GitHub repo. And to do that, we just simply say git push. And it pushes it up there for us. If we hit refresh here, we'll see that the, the commit message is here. We can go look at it and see that the new line has been added and the new file has been added. So now then, let's go over to our fork virtual machine. We're going to copy the project URL and paste it into our fork virtual machine. And we're going to create a fork. We're gonna simply going to come up here in the upper right. We're going to cl click the fork button, and that's going to tell GitHub to do its thing, create a fork for us. Should only take a few seconds. And once it's down, once it's created the fork, we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did over here on the upstream and copy the HTTPS clone URL. We're going to bring that down here to our git bash. And say again, git clone. Paste in that URL. 
and let's go ahead and jump in. Now, before we do anything, we need to go ahead and set up this local repo to track the upstream project. Uh, it's not necessary immediately to do this, but if you ever want to sync changes from the upstream repo into your repo, it, this is absolutely necessary. It's really easy to do. We're going to say git remote add, I'm going to call it upstream, that's a convention. And then what we would do, what you would do in real life is you would come and you would click here on the upstream URL and pull that in. But since we already have it here, we have the upstream page, I'm just going to go ahead and click the HTTPS clone URL and paste that in. What that's going to do, we can check our remotes by git remote dash v and we'll see that we currently have our original, the origin remotes as well as our upstream remotes. This will come in handy down the road when we need to sync this repo with the upstream repo. All right, as I said earlier, we need to create a feature branch for our pull request. This makes dealing with the pull request very simple. GitHub automatically includes any changes on a branch uh, as part of a pull request. So it, it, you don't have to, to worry about anything. So, um, it's the best practice. Go ahead and do this. You should probably never do your changes on a fork when you're creating a pull request. You should never uh, do those changes within the master branch. You should create a, f a, a feature branch. To do that, we're going to say git checkout dash b. And we're going to call this quite simply feature branch. And that goes ahead and git creates the branch and puts us in it. All right, let's go ahead and push some changes into file1.txt so that we have something to do a pull request for. So for that, we're going to say echo. We're going to say edit1, because it's the first edit in our fork, from fork slash feature branch. I'm going to do two pointy brackets so that echo or so that bash knows to append these changes to the end of the file. I'm going to say file1.txt. If we go ahead and we look at our file, we'll see that we now have two changes, edit one from upstream, edit one from fork. Let's go ahead and let git know about these changes. Let git know to change check to follow these changes and we'll go ahead and commit this change. So I'm going to say commit one from fork slash feature branch. And now if we look at, I'm going to clear this out and let's look at our git log. We have commit one from upstream master and then commit one from fork feature branch. All right, so now we need to push these changes to GitHub, but we also, not only do we need to push the commit, we need to push the branch. Uh, and we also need to set up upstream tracking so that that branch is tracked against the local branch. Um, this is something that's a little bit complicated to understand, but it's very easy to set up. To do this, we're going to say git push and say dash dash all, which tells Git to push all branch, all of our local branches to the remote. And then we're going to say dash u. And this is going to push all of our changes and all of our branches and set up upstream tracking on these branches. So now, as you see here, it's set to track remote branch changes from the master from origin, but also it created a new branch feature branch on our origin, which is our GitHub repo, and set that up, set up our local branch to track changes from there. I'll do a later tutorial to better explain what this all is doing, but for now, just understand that you just need to say git push dash dash all dash u, and it'll make your life very easy whenever it comes time to sync changes from an upstream repo and then push those back to GitHub. If we come over here to our GitHub project, you'll see that GitHub has pushed out a change to our website saying that a new branch has been 
created and maybe we'd like to compare and create a pull request. In this case, yes we do. We go ahead and load that up. We see that it's auto-populated in the commit message and given us a chance to create the pull request and tells us that this pull request is able to be merged automatically. That means that there's no changes in the upstream repo that would preclude Git from automatically merging in our changes. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that pull request. Again, Git tells us that it's able to be merged automatically, but we're gonna change that by, by creating a little bit of trouble. If we come here on the upstream virtual machine, we see exactly what we see here, except that the upstream as the upstream repo owner is able to merge the pull request. Now, imagine that you've created this pull request and the upstream repo owner is going through multiple pull requests um, and has merged some before yours and some of those changes conflict with files or with code that you've written and they're, they're going to need you to merge those changes into your code before they can accept your pull request. Let's go ahead and simulate that happening. To do this, we're going to say echo edit2 from upstream master and push that into file1.txt. We're going to add that to git and then we're going to commit. Commit1, sorry, commit2 from upstream slash master. And now what's going to happen is we're going to push this change up to GitHub and GitHub is automatically going to update both of these pages to let us know that this pull request can no longer be automatically merged because we have conflicting changes that we'll need to work on. Now that we've done it we see, oh, we can't merge this automatically. So now imagine that you are the, the upstream repo maintainer. You're going to say, please rebase from master and update the pull request. We see over here we've got the message. And as a, as a new user of Git, you may think, be thinking, oh no, what do I do? Well, I'm here to tell you it's not very difficult at all especially if you keep your master clean. You never make changes in master until they've been merged in to the upstream master. So I'm going to go ahead and clear our screen and I'm going to pull the changes down from the upstream repo, but I'm going to I'm going to do a rebase instead of a merge. This will um, just move the pointer for head pull in the changes and move the pointer for head to the new to the newest to whatever head is on the upstream. We're going to do this so that we don't create any new checkouts in our master. So first, we need to check out master and we're going to say git pull dash dash rebase to tell it to do a rebase instead of a merge. I'm going to say upstream master. Now then, what it's done is it's gone ahead. We had not previously pulled in these uh, branches from the upstream. So it went ahead, it pulled those down, created new locally tracked branches, and did a fast forward rebase. Um, basically, if we look at the log now, we'll see that the log on the the fork master and the log on the upstream master are exactly the same. The commits are the same and the number of commits are the same. All right, so we've gone ahead, that was easy. You know, we went ahead, because we don't ever make any changes on our master branch, the rebase is, is easy. It's a fast forward rebase. Just simply do that command and no problem. We're good to go. Things get a little bit more complicated when we move back into our branch. So we're going to get checkout feature branch. 
and we are going to for this we will get rebase master now this tells us git gives us a lot of information we're going to see that it has to patch and a three-way merge merging failed due to conflicts and it tells us that there's a patch file that we need to deal with what we can do to look at what git has done is we can pull it up in our favorite editor i'm going to use adam and we see that git has put the edit from the original upstream which there's no conflicts on but then also there are conflicts for the second line we have edit 2 from upstream master and edit 2 edit 1 from fork feature branch and it tells us that the commit message is here so in this case things are pretty simple and, and in general resolving conflicts with git uh, is simpler than other other source control managers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out what git put and I am going to say well our change was there first so I'm going to do that so this is going to be our merged changes to let git know about them we simply have to save the file okay and then we come over here we say git add and this is a step that a lot of people forget about and causes a lot of confusion um, we're not necessarily creating a new uh, commit we would think but we still need to let git know that we're we're ready to go so we say git add file one dot text and then as git said here when you have resolved the problem run git rebase dash dash continue so we'll go ahead and do that git rebase dash dash continue all right now if we go ahead and look at our git log we'll see that we've got initial commit commit one commit two commit one that seems wrong but actually it isn't we've we have created a new uh, commit and so when you look here at this commit is DE52EB but if we come over here and look in our pull request we'll see that it was 1E82747 well that's a different commit Git has actually rewritten history for us so that that gives us a few problems obviously we need to push these changes up but Git's not going to want to let us do that initially so to do that we're going to have to force it to so we will say git push dash dash force what this is going to do is push our changes and tell git to ignore any conflicts just go ahead what is on our local machine is to be rewritten over what is on github go ahead and do that and you'll notice that our pull request has automatically been updated we have now that the pull request can be automatically merged and we have a new commit here that's different it's the one we just talked about de52 eb8 and we can say I have rebased please consider my changes all right and we see this over here now then as the upstream project upstream repo manager we can go ahead and we'll look at this commit and we'll see oh yeah yes we're happy with the changes this person has made we'll go ahead and come back we'll back up and merge pull request we say this gives us a chance to create a uh, a new commit message because we're actually going to create a, another commit as we merge in the changes so we'll say merged changes from PR1 okay it has been merged if we come over here on the upstream we'll see that we have a new commit and if we go look at it we'll see that it looks just like this it has two parent commits now then over here we have yet again gotten out of sync so what we need to do is check out our master and get 
pull. It tells us we're ahead of origin master by one commit. But we don't care because these checkouts aren't right. So we're going to go ahead and get pull dash dash rebase upstream master. And as you saw, we were ahead, and now we're, we're two steps ahead of this one, but we don't care because we're never actually making any edits on our forks master branch. We can go ahead and we can push the changes, and we'll see if we come to our downstream fork, we'll see that it has commit one from fork feature branch. And if we go ahead and do git status, we'll see that it's up to date with origin master. So if you have any questions about what we've done, please don't hesitate to add them in the comments or tweet to me at Ashley M. Grant, all one word. I'll be glad to answer anything you have. Uh, I've been learning this along with you guys. And just let me tell you, it's, it's easy once you start to think about it a little bit differently. Um, the first time I did this, it was very, very difficult. It took me nearly half an hour to, to run through the steps. I, I messed up many, many times. Um, but after a little bit of practice, uh, it's, it's not so hard anymore. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. This has been Ashley Grant.